I came to celebrate the International Fighting Day for Women. I think this is the first time where I'm actively uh, doing something on this day. There's always room, obviously, for improvement. It's been a lot of different groups. We call it the Mars Ace Collaboration. So obviously the Gender Museum is the core organization where that's putting this program together. But really all the different things you see in the program are organized by a lot of different feminist activist groups uh, from all different places in Aarhus. So it's, um, it's kind of a collaboration, actually. Uh, and then uh, I've, I'm the person, I guess, who uh, has to um, hold on to all the strings and, and get all the different inputs um, to match up and, uh, and see to that everyone who wants to join are in the program. Okay, and do you, do you have like a structure defined already or do you brainstorm with the groups that are joining that year to see what other activities you can do? We have kind of a structure. We always have the big demonstration, the Equality Mash, that's every year and we try to make it so that there are no other things planned at that time mm -hmm. um, so that all the different uh, people from the different venues and groups and uh, activities they can gather for the Equality Mash. So that's one thing that's pretty much the same every year. And then there are some some uh, program um, parts that the Gender Museum organize, uh, some talks that are also usually quite similar, and then we we have the the morning and uh, for uh, small workshops and, and banner sign painting. Um, so that's kind of a structure for the, the program that has been most of the years, but um, eventually it's about what the different groups want to put into it. So the idea of doing this collaborative program is um, to have the Gender Museum as a platform on March 8th for all the different feminist activists in Aarhus so, the, so they can have this as a place that they can use and there are some resources and a lot of visibility also because it's the Gender Museum um, and they can kind of come and put their own agenda and their own plans and their own activities uh, into it. Okay. And um, how do you select this um groups that you have uh, like a collaboration with can just a group come to you and say I have this idea for uh, Women's Day can we make it happen or how, how does it work anyone who has something related to the Women's Day agenda feminist agenda can come and join um, we put out an open call and everyone can answer it. We also reach out to most of the grassroots activist groups that we know are active in Aarhus uh, so they get a chance to tip in with something, organize something or even just uh, participate in the march if they don't have the people to do a bigger workshop. Does also the march has have a structure? Like, do you have uh, speeches at the beginning? Like, how does it uh, work? What's the route? Yes, so the march starts, it's one hour altogether, and the first half hour is uh, three speeches, and we practice some chants, some things that we're going to yell during the demonstration, and present the, there is a march band also that uh, takes us through the road. Uh, so that takes the first little less than half an hour, maybe. And then for the rest of the time, we have a road where we walk through Aarhus. Um, and it goes through most of the city center, the Latin quarters, and Owen, and uh, these areas. Yeah. And how has the how has it been the feedback? Like, do a lot of people go? Like, do a lot of people join? Did you notice any difference these last years? Like, how has it been? Usually, there has been a lot of people for the march. I, mm, the year where it was biggest, we were almost 2,000, usually around 500, 2000. yes, but usually around 500 people, and I'm guessing that's probably the number we're going to hit this year as well, um, which is a big, it's a big demonstration for a city like, uh, like Aarhus, yes. <laughs> Why did you think that it's, it's important for you as a woman? Because men and women are not equal mm -hmm. as it is, and they ought to be. Thank you for joining us, Alexander. So why did you decide to come to Con today? Um, because I think it's a very important day today and it's um, this sort of the, the center in, in my mind, I think, in all for this uh, community, mm -hmm. I guess. And um, it's, I think it's a, a pretty good place for, for everybody to visit because I think a lot of the, the bars and clubs and I know there's not a lot of those in Aarhus but but I think those places are a bit more reserved maybe for the people who are part of the community mm -hmm. um, but I think this is a, a good place for everybody to to come where you don't feel like you're you're like a disturbing the okay. like very the open and welcoming yeah exactly 
Was it something, was there something in the program today that caught your attention? Something that you came here specifically for? Um, um, not, not particularly, but um, we, we talked about going to the, um, the lecture about the, um, the consent law. Um, which I thought was pretty would be pretty interesting, yeah. but uh, that unfortunately got cancelled. So, yeah. did you yeah. did you read something about it before, or like were you interested because you didn't know so much about it, or were you interested because mm. you start doing some research and you wanted to know more? I think I think mostly um, I knew that I was going to do something related to the uh, to this day, but but I didn't really know what to do. So. So I thought that this would be a, a good place to go because there's a lot of a lot of the things happening today are, are sort of tied together with this, like the march, for example. It's not I don't know if it's exclusively for people who've been here, or I guess that's just for all people. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay. but I but I didn't really read that much before going in. And so you're going to attend the, the march later on yeah. today. Okay. Are you excited about it? Was is it going to be yeah. the first one? Uh, yes, actually, it is the first. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And uh, about the workshops, are you also planning to to attend those those workshops that are happening here at Con today? Um, yes, I was. Uh, um, I think I I will, but um, but I'm not sh not really sure um, which ones yet, mm -hmm. but. But I think after after this, I'll go around and, uh, and look at, at the stuff. Do you do you usually celebrate Women's Day, mm. or is this the first time that you're more active? I think it? this is the first time where I'm actively uh, doing something on this mm. day. But I usually, yeah, I I think I usually just say happy happy uh, Women's International Day or something to my friends. But but I don't really usually do something. Mm -hmm. Like this, what, do but I'll, I think I'll start doing that. Yeah, and um, is there a particular reason why this year you decided to be more active? Was mm -hmm. it because the program was catchy? Was it because something happened that made you realize that okay, this might be interesting? Um, I don't think there's anything particular that made me more interested in, mm -hmm. in it this year, but I think just in general, as I I don't know, got older, uh, I started caring more about social issues. Um, mm -hmm. So I think maybe that's a bit, a bit more where, what I care about now, because mm -hmm. as a, a you know, white, cis, straight man, I, I, I've never really had any reason to um, really uh, do something um, for my own sake. So, yeah. so I think just as, as, as the years uh, came, I don't know how to say it, um, mm -hmm. I just got more and more interested in it. And how did you realize this? Was it because, I don't, I don't know, you saw something about it in the news? Uh, was it because your female friends mentioned something that happened? It was actually uh, Gustav who uh, asked me if I wanted to come. Okay. Okay. And uh, you also mentioned some workshops. Uh, what workshops do you, do you have this year? Yeah, so um, there is a sign painting workshop every year, which was in the morning, still going on a little bit. And then uh, Social Justice has had a rock painting workshop that I, I think is really cool. It's about um, painting rocks with the f feministic slogans or agendas and messages and then leaving them in public space. So kind of like about claiming space in public. It's really nice. Right now, uh, Suf is having a workshop downstairs where they're making a collage about the feminist revolution um, that everyone can come and join. Um, and then uh, Everyday Sexism Project has an exhibition also downstairs that's also still going on where um, people can play some games and um, listen to some stories about everyday sexism and, and things like that. So uh, why did you decide to come here to CON today? Well, I saw on Facebook the program, and I thought there were a bunch of interesting workshops and uh, talks here. We, or I came to actually hear the, uh, there's a talk about the consent law in Denmark, but that was uh, 
cancelled. So yeah, that was a little bit. Because she got to she death. Got threat, yeah, threats. Yeah. So yeah. Security reasons. So. Yeah, now I'm just gonna go around and check out some of the workshops and then join the march later on. Mm -hmm. So this was the main thing that you came uh, to see. Was it also the, the march uh, a big part of your interest? Yeah. On the program? But uh, mm -hmm. I th guess some of the workshops are in preparation for yeah. the march, so mm -hmm. they're kind of connected like that. So do you know which workshop did you would you like to try? Uh, I saw that you can make a banner or a mm -hmm. badge. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to be doing, but I'm, I'll be checking most of it out, probably. And you also mentioned that uh, usually it was a kind of a bigger program, but this year it was a little bit smaller. Yes, I think altogether the program is, is maybe actually bigger, but we have fewer things in the museum, because um, the former years a lot of the people we collaborated with all came and did their activities at the Gender Museum, but this year there are also acti activities at uh, Café Mellenfolk and at Dog One and at Quinnehusel. So some of the people who would used to have the events here, they now have them in different venues. So, so we spread it out so it's less crowded in the house uh, today than usually, but I think the program is uh, at least as big as it used to be altogether. Yeah. Okay, just not in the in just the not same. same yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this year I also saw that there is some kind of collaboration with the the um, festival of the century. Yes. Is this happening every year? Yeah, that's or exactly what I think. Okay. <laughs> and this year is the theme is the theme is revolution. So mm -hmm. how did you were you involved in that um, in that decision? How did you adapt your program to, to that? Um no I I don't know how much Julia and the museum were involved. You have to ask mm -hmm. her about that. Um, so, so I, I don't know how the decision came to be that the focus was on a revolution. I know that um, the, we usually decide on a theme for um, International Women's Day among all the groups. And this year, we didn't so much do that again because the program is spread out. So the Gender Museum picked up in the Revolution program, which is from Ohnos Festival, as you said. And the other different groups have other themes that they like to gather around. So this year, the um, collective um, theme that we have is the one of the Equality March, because that's where all the groups gather this year. Um, so the program as such doesn't have one theme, but the Equality March has a theme that is uh, close the gap and that refers to um, to the pay gap of course because that has been debated a lot in Denmark this past year um, during the nurses strike and there's been a lot of um, discussions around equal pay and low pay as well um, but it also refers to all the other kind of gaps in equality that people would like to address so the speakers at the demonstration they'll be talking about the gaps in equality that they are passionate about closing um, so that's the collective theme uh, this year for that mm. now I'd like to ask you like uh, how how important is for you the 8th of March like um, as a woman how do you how do you feel like that do you feel like it's something a date that is really needed do you feel like it's not so needed anymore? Like, how do you feel about that? I think it's the best day of the year, absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's super important. As a woman, sure, it's important. But I also do feminist activism all year round. So, so from that, like personally? yes, mm -hmm. and a lot of other people too. So from that perspective, maybe March 8th is not the most important. But as an activist, I find the day extremely important because it's one of the best days of the year for mobilizing. A lot of people who are not usually activists, they come out and they do stuff on this day and it's the best place to get people involved in doing more uh, continuous activism and be more committed to, um, to these different activist courses and that's really important. So, so as an activist I think March 8th is definitely one of the most important days we have during the year um, for feminism. Do you usually celebrate Women's Day? I don't know if I celebrate it. I think this is maybe the first year that I've actively gone out and taken part in it. Mm -hmm. I, I might have done something other years, but this is the most active I've been <laughs> on this day. Okay. And how do you feel about this day? Like I think it's good. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, I think it raises a lot of interesting points and in politics that I'm not, that I don't know a lot about. So I think it's interesting to learn. Mm -hmm. Uh, about it. So I feel like it's a, it's a good day to learn more about uh, what women are fighting for, for instance? Yeah, for sure. And that also, I g 
get, for the most part, what uh, we're fighting for, what women are fighting for, but the different means of achieving what they're fighting for, I think, is interesting, because there are obviously different perspectives yeah, on how to achieve mm -hmm. the goal. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about contributing more actively for it, like joining a group or something? I don't really know of any uh, groups I would uh, join. If uh, I just recently went to a lecture at the university about the uh, feminist economy, which I found very interesting with, um, what's her name? I'm blanking on her name, but it was very interesting. And what do you mean by feminist economy? Um, like a famous women in economics? No, or? it was more about how uh, the economy um, how we can tailor it more t towards being uh, er, contributing to equality versus uh, now that the, the economy is a big part of why there is inequality between men and women and others. Mm, like the wage gap? Yeah, exactly. So it was about explaining maybe sort of why it is. And uh, Emma Holten, that's what her name, she talked about also something called re reproductive um, labor all the uh, labor that mostly women historically have been doing that isn't actually uh, something you get paid for. Yeah, uh, like which taking care of the house. It's like a part of the economy that you couldn't uh, mm -hmm. do without, but it's not rewarded in any way, really. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. Did your friends, um, female friends, uh, mention something to you before? Like before the Women's Day, like not necessarily related to this day, but in general with the um, discrimination against women? Yeah, I think once you start really um, caring about these things, it just, it's impossible not to, to see the issues be because you can ask people like personally or you can, when you when you read more about the uh, these issues, you'll, you can, you, you find all those structural injustices going on, so it's it's just a matter of once you start uh, caring about it, you, you you can't really not see all the problems that are. And it's also the day where where people are more in, inclined to listen to feminist agendas, and it would be better if they would do that all year. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at least it's a starting point for getting some people interested or in catching some people who maybe were not that interested before. Okay. Mm. And you also mentioned that you did um, activism throughout the year. What other things are you involved in? Like, is it related to the museum somehow? Like, it's not particularly related to the museum. They do help out sometimes. It's a really awesome organization when it comes to just supporting small grassroots initiatives from time to time. But um, I'm right now, I think, especially involved in the group that's called Ege in Mia, Never One More. Uh, the one that had a yes, and it's an, a, a grassroots group, very not organized at all, but also very active, uh, that fights gender violence. Mm. And so what type of things do you do? You, like, are you in charge of something there? Are you more of a volunteer, like help out yeah, what it's needed? Persons, so okay. it's just a, <laughs> I'm like most grassroots, group, grassroots uh, groups have very few people who are continuously active. And then when obviously there's something happens that you want to do bigger events, you, you draw people in and you get more people active. You get a bigger crew of volunteers to actually get things done. But this sort of like continuous running of a name really doesn't require that many people. Um, so what we do is we use it every time something relevant to um, gender violence and bodily integrity comes up. We uh, use that name to um, very quickly and very efficiently make protests about it. So we did a, a large protest recently against gender violence because of the Mia case from Aalborg. And uh, we do November 25 every year. is the UN International Day um, to End Gender Violence. We mark that every year. We also mm -hmm. did larger protests or, um, more recently about uh, abortion rights when the women in Poland were protesting. We were doing something here in Aarhus. So it's kind of like a name or a group with, that we can just, a network that we can draw on every time we want to do something because it's happening now and we want to act now. Yeah. And do you feel like uh, it's hard to get to people, especially because it's only two people in, in the organization, mm -hmm. in the group? Um, do you feel like it's hard to mobilize people when you need a lot of hands? Mm -hmm. Let's say. I think it's very difficult to mobilize people if you need a big group of volunteers that are constantly working, or at least in the sense that holding on to people is difficult. That requires a lot of resources and a lot of time and a lot of volunteer coordination that most of us who are also 
you know, working full-time job and doing other activist stuff and, and have a lot of projects going on, we don't have the time for that. But I, I think these grassroots groups uh, in Aarhus, they work because they're such a good feminist environment and everyone kind of knows each other a little bit. So we know that even though they're only, for example, two persons in Ege and Mia, um, we have a huge network. So every time something that's relevant that we need to protest comes up, there's a large network of feminists and, and people that you can draw on and who want to help. And then we can mobilize a lot of people quite easily for smaller periods of time or for, um, for like one-off events. That's not too difficult. Mm. Yeah, so you feel like two, two people right now can handle, can handle it quite well then? Yes, and I mean, we are not that many people behind the March 8th program either. We are a lot more than two, but, <laughs> but it's not a, a massive uh, organizational um, project either. It's really uh, just working because of the support of the community and, and all the really engaged uh, activists, feminist activists that we have in Aarhus who know each other and who are used to working together and, and who are super efficient just at getting things done really fast when something comes up. And now about uh, Men's Day, International Men's Day, do you feel like, uh, because most people don't even know that it's in the 19th of November, so do you, f do you think that eventually it will grow to be as big as Women's Day? Do you have any thoughts on this? And uh, what about uh, Men's Day? What are your thoughts on <laughs> Yeah, on I, that I, day? I just now found out that that existed, I think. Mm -hmm. How serious is it? Uh, is it like kind of like a counter like almost like a protest day to protest. like men's rights activism. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like that. It's not necessarily one against the other. It's okay. one it's about celebrating women and the other one is about celebrating men, but that doesn't mean that um, you're putting women down on men's day or you're putting men down. On okay, women's I think day. it's it sounds, now I'm giving my opinion on it, knowing nothing about it pretty much, but it sounds a little bit ridiculous to me because obviously women's uh, day is born out of like struggle and oppression, mm -hmm. and uh, it exists to uh, try and make everybody equal. So it mm -hmm. seems a little bit uh, counterintuitive, almost that there's immense. It just seems unnecessary to me. So do you f do you think that eventually it will grow to be as big as Women's Day? Do you have any thoughts on this? I don't think it will. Um, I think. It's a fine day to have um, for a lot of reasons. It's not something I would ever really want to get particularly involved in because it's not my area of expertise. I do this work on March 8th because it's about gathering a community that I'm very embedded in, but mostly I work with gender violence and with victims of gender violence, and that, that is mostly women and LGBT plus people. There's a certain probably double standard there, and I think if you, if uh, on men's uh, international day, that if if the focus is on, for example, um, how men, I think suicide rates for men are higher because usually men have like a harder time uh, talking about their feelings because of societal pressures, mm -hmm. and um, I think sometimes in, I don't know how much this is in Denmark, but I know in other countries, like in divorce courts, uh, there's usually it's usually harder for the father to. Uh, to get custody of the child on virtue of him being the father. So those are obviously also problems. Uh, the traditional women jobs in Denmark who are uh, pay who are paying less than the typically mainly jobs. So I, I don't know how to uh, say say it, but like um, a nurse, for example, and um, yeah, exactly, and, and yeah, kindergarten teacher. Yeah. I don't know if there's another name for it. No, but 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 those are like uh, categorically. Um, paying less because because it's women's jobs, mm -hmm. um, and then there's all all of the cultural and uh, personal issues like in the nightlife where women just are a lot more unsafe than guys. Mm -hmm. 
and not just women, every, every uh, like sub-community. Did you have any experience with that? Did you ever even see something like that? Um, I think in the nightlife it's pretty, and I'm really sad to say that, but it's pretty normal. I, I think it's uh, it have, happens a lot that my friends or my girlfriend experiences just like minor, it's perceived as minor because it's so embedded into the culture that, but, but when people just experience these small um, assaults, I guess you could call it, okay. like in, in, in various degrees. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like um, being grabbed on your ass or getting cold stuff in, on a bar or I, I don't know. Guys not respecting your boundaries in general, I think. Mm -hmm. That's just the general uh, problem. People not respecting like the consent. How do you feel like Denmark is doing um, about gender equality or inequality? I think we're doing generally compared to a lot of other parts of the world. We're doing pretty well, we're pretty good. But I think uh, Danish people have a tendency to uh, be content once once they've reached like a certain level of equality and then they can always point to other nations and say oh we're doing much better than them so there's really no need for us to fight any further okay. and I think I think that's a problem that people mm -hmm. think that because I think there's always room obviously for improvement I remember a lecture mm -hmm. uh, when I, ha I I thought I had a bright idea and put my finger up and and said what I wanted to say, and it was just swept away. A few minutes later, a male student said exactly the same, and, oh, that was interesting. Oh. And I felt, oh, that's what it is like here. You feel, yeah, discriminated based yeah. on your gender. With your experience as activists and, uh, well, from a member of a community, you can see what's wrong and yeah. what's not. Do you have any suggestions or solutions or something that you think that it should be done or it's very obvious, maybe it isn't, that you think it would help the general um, situation, the community in general? Mm. Um, I think actually organizing in close-knit communities is the best solution um, to solving problems around equality because the ways that these communities support each other really does make a lot of uh, big change and, mm -hmm. and as a small activist group there are a lot of things you can't do but at least you can build the foundation for bigger movements and for bigger change um, and the support for people to become part of those movements. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>